The stars know who you are. Get ready to dive into your personal solar return chart and discover what waits for you in the coming days, weeks, months, and even years. Connecting to your astrological alignments will help you to optimize opportunities and understand the path of your life and your soul. This live two-day online astrology workshop takes place February 26th and 27th and is perfect for beginners and the experienced alike. Make sure to check out all the details in the link in the description and we hope to see you there. Hey, I'm back with another episode of Metaphysical Corner. For those of you who don't know, the Metaphysical Corner is a part of Spirit Pop Podcast, which is a podcast that I do with my really tight homeboy, Brian Fisher. It's just a fun pop culture podcast, but with a spiritual twist. And we always end the pod talking about the things of spirit. And this time we talked about dimensions and shadow beings and octaves and the multiverse. And we, we really kind of geeked out, but it was fun. And I know this kind of stuff is right up your alley. So I thought I would share it with you. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So now that brings us to our favorite segment and apparently a fan favorite segment thank you because we agree <laughs> metaphysical corner yes what are we talking about today in the world of metaphysics? we i think we are going to talk about dimensions Ooh. interdimensional beings and maybe dimensional travel interdimensional travel let's wow. talk about it that's a loaded subject subjects that's a lot well do you know why i'll tell you one thing that i love is when we first started talking and you were talking about the third dimension fourth mm -hmm. dimension and and you know what's created and coming for i i just i always found that so fascinating because i didn't know a whole lot about mm -hmm. it and i'm like wow it adds so many layers to what we what what we think is going on here mm -hmm and what is going on there. And I thought it would be a wonderful topic to sort of broach. I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it a lot more, but I want to talk well, about it. Well, what do it. you want to know about dimensions? I'm here for you. I got it. I got well, you. Um, how, how about the people that don't know, mm -hmm. we'll ask some general questions like, what is a dimension? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, indeed. What is a dimension? Well, a dimension is, I think, a, a vibrational container, uh, a space and where things exist, <laughs> things that align <laughs> with that vibration and energy exist. It's like an ecosystem, but it's a, it's a container. It's got a beginning and an end. It's, it's, and once you, you can also pop out of those dimensions. You don't, okay. I'm getting crazy already. So, so we're, so we're, we're in, in a, a dimension. dimension. We are in the, th which dimension we are, are we in, in the third dimension. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. I think that in the third dimension, we have other little smaller dimensions. Some people call these octaves, like just vibrational frequencies and ranges that we can also exist in. And I also think, okay, that there are parallel universes that exist. There are para, there are parallel dimensions that exist in this dimension. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think I agree. when we have deja vu, that's us kind of rubbing up against the other crystal in the parallel dimension right next to mine, most proximate to mine. It's like me and that crystal are doing something similar or, our, or else our vibration is coming together. And it feels we have sort of a, a remembrance or a feeling like, huh, I've done this before. Huh. So, so other crystals, since you are such a light worker here in one of those dimensions, is she like a terrible non light worker? I mean, possibly, I don't think so. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> Well, I mean, no, I mean, you know, I'm only basing right. this on Hollywood giving us movies where the, you know, the other us in the other dimension right. that crosses over is, is the complete opposite of who we are well, in this good point. Kirk, bad Kirk. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause they call it like what a mirror dimension or something. I don't know. And I just, I'm always fascinated by, well, I always thought one of me is enough, but now I know there are there infinite are, there are infinite use and not just in the third dimension, you have a version of you in every single dimension. Now I kind of, uh, ascribe to a theory or a, f a format of dimensionality called the dimensions of light, because there's all kinds of different ideas about how dimensions work and how many dimensions there are. But with the dimensions of light, I think we have, <laughs> it's right there, like 13 dimensions that we go into. Um, but other, other um, systems have 144 dimensions. There's the uh, the Kabbalah, which has the tree of life. That's a, that's a system of dimensionality. But anyway, 
I believe that there is a version of us in all dimensions. And so, okay. and if you also have parallel dimensions in those dimensions, you can just kind of get a sense of how many yous there actually are all across the universe in all of the dimensions to which you have access. You have access to all of those yous because it's you. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, um, how come I haven't met the other well, me? Have you not? Zzz, Maybe please. when you dream, you pop out of this dimension and you head over into that dimension and have your experience. I believe I have actually. Okay. Tell me. Yeah. Well, tell but me I, more. But I haven't. But I haven't met me. But I haven't met me. Well, do you? But you've occupied that you, the light. I have the light body. That me. Yeah, I will tell you. There was one that that was really interesting because it was. A, I almost felt like it was another planet. I don't know. It was so weird. But I, I was living in a coastal area with with a, a, a lady and a guy, a mother and father. And I instant. So let me explain how this happened. It was me in in meditation. This is when I was living back in Pittsburgh. I was in deep meditation, and and I was I just for whatever reason I opened my eyes because I always try to you know meditate with my eyes closed. I opened my eyes. And the, the, the lands, like I was in a room, I was in my room and slowly I saw an, an eroding of where mm -hmm. I was. It was just, it wasn't fading away. It was like eroding away. And what was replaced was me sitting on a cliff with this woman, this man who I knew as my parents, there was nothing spoken. There were looks. And there were there were knowings, but th this was a non-verbal thing. I think maybe we just ascended mm -hmm. to not really needing to verbalize, and we were just sitting. And what we were watching was off into the ocean. There was I don't know if it was an island. I'm, it's it's so long ago, but but it was it was being destroyed, and we were watching this Ooh, happen. Atlantis. And there was. I thought maybe, <laughs> was it Atlantis? but I'm not 100% sure, mm -hmm. but I, but I, that this, when I came out of all of that, that is what I felt. And I felt such a sense of loss because for that period of time, when I was in that, I felt probably the most comfortable I have felt in this dimension ever, even to this so day. So do you think that that was dimensional travel? Like into an event that was happening somewhere in a dimension at the time? Or do you think that was like a past life remembrance? So like a, a travel of the timeline versus dimensional? I kind of lean towards previous, mm -hmm. but for a long time, I kind of felt like it was something that was happening in another. But as, as I got a little older and did a little more work trying I've never been able to get back there I can tell you that um I, that's when I kind of started shifting and thinking I think that was that's what was at some point and it was just somehow you mm -hmm. know going back to that and it was such an open meditation anyway I wasn't really trying to achieve anything other than really trying to just raise my consciousness and my vibrations and and just really see where I could mm -hmm. go and it was at midnight it was so quiet there was nothing going on and it was just so dead quiet. I mean, I didn't even hear a ticking of a clock. It was just so quiet that I was able to just up, up, up. Wow. Well, you know, Edgar yeah. Casey, the sleeping prophet and my real tight homeboy, I love Edgar Casey. He was a channel. He said that um, many Atlanteans, former Atlanteans would be reincarnating into the world at the turn of the age. So like the year around the year 2000, that a lot of the Lumerian, Lum Lemurians, sorry, Lemurians, Lemurians and Atlanteans would be coming back, like people who have the spiritual technology way back in the day. And so maybe you are an Atlantean or a Lemurian. Maybe you are. But I was like born so long before all that. Well, no, but I mean, you're still here for the turn of the age and you were, you know, an adult, you That's were a true. thinking person, you were developing so that you could be here now when the AI takes over. Oh, Zuckerberg. Anyway. <laughs> so that that does kind of feel like it does kind of feel like a timeline thing though like maybe you were remembering a life as a, a lemurian or an atlantean maybe. maybe and i i will tell you that when when i try to meditate on it i mean i even did this just a couple weeks ago like it kind of popped back into my mind and i sat and i tried to meditate and all i kept seeing was like 
it felt like me off in a distance seeing something that was in a distance and it was like rings like circles but they were all kind of overlapping each other and and it was just a long thing and and i was trying to concentrate on that i kept thinking about that moment sitting there looking out and there was a light in the seventh ring oh my god really on the seventh ring there was a light and i almost felt am i looking at a map and and, and am i am i connected to that because um, i was thinking you know why can't i get back to this why can't i see this again blah blah whatever and i see that light and i'm like oh that's telling me where it's at wow but that that was as far as i was able to get well have you ever like externalized that like drawn that or anything like drawn the rings and like meditated no, with I it should. yeah you should. should you should use it as I a dimensional make a map sigil. make yes make a sigil use it as a dimensional map to get to get to that the place of that space the place of your people oh my god that's exciting i want to see i want to see the map if you draw it I'm going to draw. I'm so well, not neither draw. am I, I but it doesn't it. matter really. It's, it's the, okay. it's the act of externalizing it from taking it from okay. within and putting it without that we can create the channel and the gateway. You know, that reminds me when I was 18, I was in ocean city, New Jersey, and I went to a place called a touch of spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think it's still around, but there was a lady that ran the shop. Her name was joy Carroll. And I went in and I looked around cause it was a new age shop. And it was beautiful. And she came right over to me and started talking to me. And she said, yeah, I can feel your energy. She's like, I would like to do some Reiki on you. I didn't know what Reiki was at 18. I had an idea, but I didn't know. And I said, okay. And I was with some friends and they're like, we'll go shop and we'll come back for you in about an hour. So I sat down with her and she started working and she, she pulled for some stuff on me. I'll tell you that much. But then she said, I, I really would like you to meet a niece. I'm like a niece, your niece, like what? She said, Anise, because I, you're more than, than what you think. And I just thought that was better. I usually want me to buy a book or something. <laughs> so this little, I'm not kidding, this this shorter statured person who reminded me so much of Tangina from Poltergeist oh, okay. came in. Mm -hmm. And she she called her and told her to come, right? So she comes. She introduces herself, whatever. She's like, I, I need to show you something. They take me to the back. And in the back, there's um, frames. And they're covered like from with canvas. She pulls off the canvas. She flips through, pulls the third one out, shows it. It's a man standing on a rock with his hands like this, mm -hmm. talking to the people below. And there is, yes, and there is a star up in the sky above, above him. And she said, that man is you. What? And she said, and you are our leader. What? Well, at 18... <laughs> Um, and, and not as fully immersed in some things in my head. I'm like, well, that's a bunch of hooey, but yet the energy around all of that was, I actually felt inclined to, to almost believe. Really? Wow. Yes. And when I, um, you're our leader shop, that's what she said. So I felt like I was some kind of Special, like spiritual yeah. <laughs> right. leader. Well, I mean, everyone wants to be special at right. 18 when you're heading out into right. the world, but, but it, but it felt very genuine and it did feel very sincere of them to say such a thing. And, and she said I was starborn. Well, I believe that, but, uh, but I've never, I, I, do I you? do. Well, well, of course you do. You said I mean, it. I think, yeah, I think that, um, there's, yeah, look. I don't know like that you're a, a <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, yeah, I don't know that you're um, like a Pleiadian yeah. or a, an Arcturian, uh, Oh, I don't think either. Of, no. no, but I mean, I think that you have like some of that DNA, some of that energy and vibe in you of starseed stuff. Yeah, I do think so. Hmm. I mean, do you not? Hmm. Do you do you feel do you feel in alignment with any specific interdimensional race or type of like the ETs, like the little greys? I've I've always felt like honestly that I was not of this 100 yeah, percent. that's the typical but what i don't know what that's i don't know how star seeds and star people feel like they don't they that yeah. the, their home is somewhere other than this 100 yeah, percent. that five billion percent that yes. makes sense um yeah I, I taught a, a class called many mansions 
many moons ago, years ago, but I actually made a list of all the things that, um, symptoms, I guess you would say, or, or aspects of being a star person. And a lot of those students were like, yep, that's me, that's me. I think I attract star people to me because maybe I too come from the stars. You know, my, when my mom conceived me and then I was in her belly, she was reading a book called The Crystal Worlds about this other planet with crystalline towers and buildings and crystalline people. And she was just, she felt very strongly that there was a connection with that with me. So and that's why, that's you're why she named me Crystal, literally. In fact, one of my, my friends slash students at one of our retreats brought me a copy of The Crystal Worlds, which I have right over there, which I have never read. I should read it because my mom was so inspired by it. You should read it. it. Yeah. Anyway, dimensions. Mm. <laughs> yes. So... So when you have an out-of-body experience, you are in the third dimension, but you're also in the fourth dimension. And we actually, the fourth dimension is very proximate to the third dimension. We go there every night when we dream. As soon as we pop out of our body, when we fall asleep, our light body separates from our physical body and we are in the fourth dimension. But part of the fourth dimension that overlaps the third dimension looks a lot like the earth plane. So people can get confused and think that they're perceiving just in 3D reality, but they're actually in another dimension. Anyway, so let me break down the dimensions and the principles of each dimension very, okay. sh very briefly. But I will say that there is a video on my YouTube channel. So Crystal Ann Compton, it's called The Dimensions of Light. And I give an hour long teaching about all the dimensions. So if you're interested in the subject, go to my YouTube. Oh, you should link it. Yeah, maybe I'll link you it. Maybe link I'll link it. it in the description. Yeah. But yeah, I talk all about it. <clears throat> but the first dimension is the dimension of Gaia. It's really the crystalline grid inside of the earth. And it is the dimension of like um, the building blocks of creation, atoms and molecules. And that's the dimension that the consciousness of these exist in. The second dimension is the uh, plant kingdom and also uh, trees and um, fairies and nature folk and gnomes and elementals. The consciousness of this exists in the second dimension. It's very proximate or close to the first dimension, the building blocks of creation, which is why nature elementals and fairies are actually very, very fierce, very fierce because they're protecting earth energy. And if humans start encroaching on earth energy or earth itself or the animal kingdom, then the nature elementals can be kind of wild. <laughs> the many Huni in Hawaii and, you know, leprechauns and stuff, they can be, the fairies can be pretty, pretty ferocious. So that's the second dimension. Third dimension is where we are. Third dimension is also uh, a dimension of time and space and the dimension of illusion, Maya, where we have this feeling that we're separate, that it's me, that it's you, but it's not we. That ends the higher up in dimensions you go. Fourth dimension is a portal dimension. When someone dies and they go into the light, that's actually a portal that's existing in 4D. And that takes them from 3D into, I would, I would suspect, 5D. When we die, we go up to the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is a dimension of Christ consciousness, Buddhic consciousness, and unity consciousness, where that separation falls away and we are all one. And it's a beautiful place. It's what we call heaven. That's the fifth dimension. Um, that's where I want to be right now. Thank well, you. That's what we're trying to draw down in our lifetime into the third dimension as above, so below heaven on earth. We're talking about 5D consciousness. Um, and you have a lot of ascended masters and some angelic and interdimensional beings that orient from the fifth dimension, namely Jesus, Buddha, and those really cool people like that. Sixth dimension is super awesome because it is the dimension of templatry and um, sacred geometry. And so anything that's created physically in the third dimension has to first be created in energy. And so the sacred geometry and the templates are in the sixth dimension. And you have a lot of really cool ascended masters and interdimensionals in the sixth dimension, like St. Germain and Melchizedek energy and Archangelic energy in the sixth dimension. Seventh dimension is sound. So it is the dimension of like light language or the primordial ohm the sound and the vibration of creation, very archangelic mm -hmm. in the seventh dimension. Eighth dimension is light and let there be light, the power of light. And the ninth dimension is another portal dimension. But whereas 
Fourth dimension is a portal. The tunnel of light takes you to fifth dimension. In the fourth dimension, that portal will also take you to other dimensions. And it's actually a really busy dimension, the fourth dimension, which um, like you could, I, I like to liken it to that scene from Star Wars where they're in the bar and there's all those crazy, you know, aliens and crazy beings. Yeah. And then that's kind of what it's like. Cantina. That's right. That's what it's like in the fourth dimension. And pe and different beings use that portal to travel all over dimensionally in this universe. But in the ninth dimension, it's a portal outside of this universe, which now we're getting into multiverse and the reality that there are many, many, many universes. So you can travel within this universe and the structure, the dimensional structure of this, or you can pop out in the ninth dimension and go into a different universe, which I did once. I did once. <laughs> and, I, and are we going to talk about in a meditation? That? I did. And it was, it freaked me out, dude. It freaked me out because I popped out of, it's a whole thing. <laughs> I popped out of this universal structure and our universe is governed by a frequency. It's, it's governed by a frequency that which we call God, which is love. That's the vibration of it. That's the frequency and everything in our universe is arranged based on that. But in other universes, it's not that necessarily. So I, I popped into a different place, a different universe, and I could feel nothing. I couldn't feel love. I couldn't feel God. I couldn't really sense fully uh, the place I was in because I didn't have the capacity, the eyes to see, or, or just the senses to feel. And I, it freaked me out because I didn't feel love. I didn't feel God. And I was actually attended during this meditation by angels, <laughs> the whole thing. But when I started freaking out and panicking and getting very, very, like almost a panic attack, they said, calm down. It's just that you can't feel it. But whereas love governs our uni your universe, this is also governed by a vibration as high as that. It's just foreign to you, but it's love or higher. But it got so complicated because <laughs> I was also given and told that there are different gods of different universes. Like, and archangels some of these archangels we have in our universe michael uriel raphael jophiel haniel those are our our guys and our ladies but in other universes you have archangels governing over there and you have different beings and sometimes these intersect those sometimes there's portals between two universes this is where shadow people come from i'm going crazy i'm gonna stop now but dimensionality like shadow beings have you ever had a shadow person encounter I think possibly twice in my life. Okay, there's a... Once mm -hmm. here and once years ago somewhere else. Well... But I'm not... So sometimes when, it, when a, a ghost is trying to appear to you or a being is trying to appear to you, the first stage of that is like a dark mist or it can appear as, as shadow. That's not what I'm talking about. No, yeah, this was... This was like, this was something that felt evil <laughs> before, before, before I learned about this, this aspect of, of stuff. So, you know, years ago, I, I would, I would have, I would have said it felt, it felt evil. demonic. Yeah. I, I would have said that it, it, it felt unearthly. Yes. Um, would be the word I would have chosen then, which clearly, you know, not of this earth, but, um, but it, 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 it was a yucky, mm -hmm. uncomfortable, sick to your stomach kind of feeling and almost felt like death. I don't know how else to describe it. it. It felt awful. And it was in my backyard. Wow. Yeah. I've... And in that corner, I yeah. showed you that corner that I said I don't yeah. go to. I'm joking. I mean, I'll go there in the day, but I, I don't go there at night. Because <laughs> something, I, don't, I was like, I hope there's not a portal say, there. I was going to say, maybe it's a portal. So I... need to like, please don't okay. because my dog likes to go back there and I don't need her in a portal. <laughs> well, just saying, sure. because who am I going to call to get her out? Right. You. Yeah. I'm in Texas too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah. And so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So get please. Yeah, don't no go portal to the light there. Carolina. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's a shadow. Shadow beings are not of this universe. I believe 
Like, I think they are from a different universe, which is why we experience them in the way that we do. And it's important with shadow people not to think that, oh, I'm afraid. I'm feeling so afraid of the shadow being. It's really not your fear response to what's happening. It's the shadow being's vibration. That's what they feel like. And they project it out and yeah. you feel it and you think, oh, I'm so afraid. No, that's just what they feel like. And these are beings that I think use these inter-universal portals to, to come in and to mess with us. Shadow beings are weird. We could have a whole other metaphysical corner about shadow beings, but I don't play with them because I have dominion and I've had a, two or three run-ins with some shadow people and I had to put them in there. Well, I was rushed by one once, rushed by him. I was having an outer body experience and I was walking around my house, checking it out. And I was in the bathroom and I turned around and it was right in the doorway to the bathroom and it just rushed me. And it scared me, of course, because I'm human. Yeah. But then yeah. I got, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. This is my house. This is my dimension. You cannot come up in here and rush me, dude. And so then I took care of it. But yeah, they're, hmm. they're dimensional beings. So can, now if we can do like a quick Q&A, mm -hmm. can anybody, I, I know the answer, but I obviously want to, can anybody travel to another dimension within our universe? Yeah, I mean, you do every night. And when you meditate, you also interdimensionally travel. I mean, it's usually to the fourth dimension. When you're altered or you're in a trance, you have one leg in 3D and one leg in 4D. And you can use that place to then launch into other dimensions. Absolutely. That portal, that tunnel of light when we see when we die, that portal exists whether we're dead or not. We can use that to travel mm -hmm to the fifth dimension now. And it's so interesting because in the third dimension, like these octaves I'm talking about, there's this, these vibrations, like the higher you get in 3D reality, which is just a vibrational thing. It's not like there's a hierarchy necessarily, but the, the higher you get or more enlightened you get, the more filled with love you get in this life, the closer you are to 5D. You can actually start feeling 5D. You can feel those heavenly vibes and you can feel those ecstatic, joyful, blissful vibes. That's 5D. And there are a lot of people right now on the planet who are hanging out in those higher octaves and they're anchoring, they're anchoring and gritting 3D for us so that more people can get there. So this is what we all should be doing. I think this is why you incarnated, you little Atlantean, Lemurian. You incarnated so that you could enlighten, refine, and then anchor, grid for everybody else. But then you have those people yeah. on the lower octaves of 3D who are trending close to animal kingdom, base impulses. These are the people, huh. yeah, these are the people who have animalistic kind of primal ways of thinking and being. These are people who rape and murder, and they exist here too. So you have a whole stratosphere of vibration existing in this third dimensional container. Oh, well, I need to be in the five. I want to be in the five, but I don't want to die to get there. You know what I mean? No. But I want, I, no, I want five, I want five here, here too. Heaven and earth. That's right. There was a new heaven. There was a new earth. There was a new Jerusalem. I want that too. But I, so let's make you it have happen. to make it happen inside of you. There's a whole that all these dimensions exist inside of you. And that's the key, I think. That's the, that's one of the takeaways. That if if you truly get that it is all within this. I mean, this is this is a human body, but we are a spiritual being, and so if, if that is the case, and that's all within us, then I mean, really, what's the limit? There is no limit. No. One, you have to believe, and so you got to put the work in. The portal is your heart. <laughs> the portal is your heart, man. Your heart ball. Kingdom of heaven is within you. It's the heart. And if you can center in the heart and use that, it's a wormhole. It'll take you places. I think this this is yeah. a, attached to, I forget, it might be Arcturus or Pleiades. I did a whole thing on this channeled bit of information. Each chakra is a portal to a specific place in our galaxy. Anyway, I'm getting, I told you, this subject makes me crazy. So we can stop now. But again, Dimensions of Light on my YouTube, <laughs> Crystalline Compton. It's a whole hour of teaching, and it's really good if I do say so myself. Of course it's it really is. Good. So please and it's check free. it out. I think you should link it. Yeah, link okay. it. Oh God. I mean, it's a freebie. It's a freebie that is fun and informative and will give you a lot of information that you can start applying into your life right then. Amen. So come on. <laughs>